Whether you're working with copper networks or fiber networks, you need to understand the fundamentals of signal loss. And signal loss, of course, is how much of that signal we are losing from one end of the connection to the other. Obviously, the signal that we get on the receive side is not going to be as strong as the one on the sending side. We call this loss attenuation. And that is that gradual loss of intensity of the signal as it goes through a medium. And that medium can be a copper cable, or it could be a fiber connection between locations. Whether you are sending signals through a copper cable, whether you're sending light through a fiber, or even using a wireless network where the signal is radio waves, you're going to have a signal loss at the other side. And the amount of signal loss is going to depend on a number of different criteria. With copper cables, we have to worry about punch downs and connectors. With fiber connections, we have long distances and also the connectors that go on the ends of the fiber and any patches in between. And with radio signals, we have to worry about any type of interference and how far away we are from that sending station. The fundamental measurement for a signal loss or signal strength is measured in bells. And what we've done in the industry is actually break that up into 10 pieces, decibels. So whenever you hear somebody talking about a dB or a decibel gain or a decibel loss, that's what it's referring to. Notice that we capitalize the B that's in the DB signal that we abbreviate. That's because it's named after Alexander Graham Bell. And so we have a capital B to designate that that's his name. We use a logarithmic scale whenever we're talking about signal loss. The decibels that we're going to use have a logarithmic scale. We'll look at that in just a moment. But the reason we use decibels instead of actually using the signal strength on the wire is because we're able to calculate it very easily. We'll do a, a calculation later in this presentation, and you'll see just how simple it is to add up the amount of loss or the amount of gain that might be on a certain set of signals. Let's look at how this logarithmic scale works. If we're talking about a difference in decibels of 3 dB, we're talking about a gain of 3 dB or a loss of 3 dB, that means that it's two times the signal. It's either two times as strong or it's two times as weak, depending on whether we're talking about a gain or a loss. If we say the difference is 10 dB, then that difference is a 10 times difference to the signal. And here's where you'll start to see that logarithmic scale really kick in is at 20 dB, there is a 100 times difference in the signal. And at 30 dB, it's a 1,000 times difference in the signal. So we're able to take these dB measurements and apply them back to this logarithmic scale. All the calculations we're going to do will be in decibels. And ultimately, you'll be able to look at those decibels and understand exactly what the differences were with the signal strength or the signal loss through that medium. Because we're using decibels to measure the signal strength or signal loss, it's simply addition and subtraction to be able to understand how much signal is going through a connection. Let's take an example of measuring out what a signal loss might be over a fiber connection. This is very common because over very, very long distances, you might lose quite a bit of light going through. And you have to make sure that the devices on both ends of these connections are able to see that light and understand what's coming through that connection. Let's take a signal strength through about a kilometer of fiber. Now, when you send traffic through a kilometer of fiber, you can look at the specifications for the type of fiber that you're using, if it's multi-mode fiber or single-mode fiber. And you'll be able to understand naturally through the fiber how much loss would we expect to see. And through multi-mode fiber, for this kilometer, we understand for what we've looked up that we might have about 3 and a half dBs of loss as this goes every kilometer. And since this connection is over a kilometer already, we know we're going to have 3 and a half dBs of loss. Now, we also have patch panels at both ends. This is a connection that terminates it and then patches it through perhaps to our routers or the switches that we have on either side. Each time you go through a patch, you're also losing signal. And so we've determined that the patch panel is going to have us lose half a decibel, or 0.5 dB, every time we have a patch. And we have patches on both ends. That means we have a total of a 1 dB loss there. So if we want to measure end to end through the patch panels, through the 1 kilometer, we add up the 3.5 decibels and the 1 decibel to get a total link loss of 4.5 decibels. And it's the simple addition and subtraction that makes it so easy to calculate and understand exactly what our signal losses might be through our network connections. 
if you have a lot of attenuation, you have a lot of signal loss through a connection, you can see a lot of interesting symptoms appear. One obviously is if you're not getting enough signal from one end to the other, you'll have no connectivity whatsoever. You won't get any link lights. You won't be able to pass any traffic. The connection simply won't come up and running. One that's a little bit more of a challenge to troubleshoot is intermittent connectivity. You plug it in, everything seems to be going well. But you're right there on the edge, and there may be times during the day when the link simply goes away, and there may be times during the day when the link works fine. That's a little more challenging to troubleshoot. You will also see times where you're getting poor performance, you're getting CRC errors, you're getting a very, very weak signal sending that traffic through. It's just not strong enough. It's not dropping out completely, but it's not giving us the performance that we might need to be able to pass traffic through that network connection. And that's where you need perhaps some troubleshooting equipment, something that might be able to measure the exact loss of signal from one side to the other. And normally, you would need some type of metering equipment, some type of troubleshooting equipment like this. And you'll need to have some understanding of exactly how it works to get the right values from it. But sometimes when you're having these very complex issues, you've got a very large amount of wiring or fiber you have to worry about, these troubleshooting devices can be invaluable to determining where exactly the problem may be occurring.